Hello and welcome to lesson number nine in the Python tutorials series. Uh, my name is Steve and today we are going to be looking at the uh, if statements in Python or sometimes known as conditional execution. The if statement allows us to create a block of code that will only run if a condition is evaluated to true. It's similar to what we saw in the while statement. Uh, one of the big differences between the while statement and the if statement is that a while statement will execute continuously until the condition is not true. An if statement is going to execute once. It will make a single check as it runs through the program. If the expression evaluates to true, it will execute the block of code beneath the if statement, and if not, it will just skip over it. And we'll see some examples of that in a second. Um, two other things that we're going to look at in this lesson is a break statement. Uh, a break statement is a keyword that when Python encounters will break whatever loop is currently being run. It's very useful with a while statement and we'll, we'll certainly be using that in a couple of the example programs we use today. So a break statement is just a way to take a loop and jump out of the code and move on to the next line. And another thing we're going to look at is nested statements, which we haven't done yet, but uh, a nested statement is a block of code within a block of code. You'll use this quite a bit in programming, most notably when you make a main game loop or a main program loop, you'll have a while statement and then a bunch of if statements nested underneath it. So that's where we're going today. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so over here in our programming window, let's look at a quick example of how an if statement would be used and how it's executed. In order to do this, I'm going to set two variables. I'm going to set x equal to a value of 1 and y equal to a value of 1. Now, very quickly, you can look at that and you can tell that x and y both point to a value of 1. Therefore, x and y are of the same value. <clears throat> I'm going to write an if statement to check this. If x, two equal signs, and y colon. When I evaluate the statement right here, I can see that the if turned that yellowish color, then that means Python recognized it as a keyword. And when we did comparison operators earlier, uh, remember that there's two equal signs. If you're checking to see if two things are equal to one another, it's two equal signs. One equal sign, like we used up here, implies that we're setting one value equal to another value or one variable equal to a particular value. So we've got the two equal signs right here. And then finally I have a colon. That's because an if statement will evaluate some kind of expression. In this case x is it equal to y. If it evaluates to true, the block of code, just like in the while statement, the block of code beneath it will execute. If it evaluates to false, the entire block of code will be skipped and it will move on to the next uh, line directly underneath it in the program. So in this case, if x is equal to y, I want to print they match. And if I execute this program as it stands right now, you can see I've already named it test.py. I'm hoping that the statement they match is printed. And I can see in this window that just popped up here. They match is uh, was in fact printed. So this lets me know that when this code was evaluated, x equals equals y evaluated to true, like it should. Now, really quickly, I could change this y value to uh, a value of 2, run this program again, and see they match is not printed because now that if statement is evaluating to false. 1 is not equal to 2, therefore the block of code underneath the if statement is just ignored. If I took the x value and set it equal to 532, and y equals 532, ran this program again, it is correctly identifying that the two numbers are equal to each other. And that, at its very base level, is all there is to an if statement. Uh, in addition, um, I think it goes back in lesson four, lesson five, we looked at logical operators, and that is and, or, or not statements. I can add those together with an if statement. Uh, with an if statement, I can also do that with a while statement. 
So if I set x equal to a value of 5 and y equals equal to a value of 10, I could write an if statement that says, well, let's make a new one down here. If x is greater than 4 and y equals 10, then I want to print x is greater than 4 and y equals 10. It's, it's kind of late at night. Uh, my, my creativity is, is not what it usually is. That is a rather boring print statement, but it will get the job done. So let's execute this code right here and see what happens. We can see that the x is greater than 4 and the y equals 10 line is executed because this statement right here evaluates to true. x is greater than 4 and y is equal to 10. Since both of those are true, this and statement, uh, when it looks at both of these, since both are true, the entire statement evaluates to true and it prints the next line. If I were to set equal to uh, x equal to a value of 2, 2 is not greater than 4, but y is equal to 10 and no line of code is executed because this expression right here that's highlighted does not evaluate to true. It evaluates to false because x is not greater than 2. If I change the AND keyword to an OR and ran this program, it is correctly printing out, even though my statement is no longer right, x is not greater than 4, but y is equal to 10, and since one of my conditionals is true, and I've got an OR statement in there, that's going to make the entire expression evaluate to true, and the block of code under my IF statement is uh, executed. Similarly, if I set x equal to 10, it'll check this first statement, 10 is equal to 10, and it should print they match. It will go down here and say, is 10 greater than 4? That's true. And it should print both of these lines on a single running of the program. And of course, it does. So now that we have that basic stuff out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and clear this program over here. Or at least I'm going to try to. There we go. Um, and I'm going to set x equal to a value of 0 to start, and I'm going to go back to what we did last lesson and do while x is less than 10, I want to add a value of 1 to x, and then I want to print x. I'm going to execute this program, and use, as you might imagine, it prints 1 through 10 and then stops executing because at the point x is equal to 10, this part of the statement evaluates to false, the entire block of code is skipped, and that's the end of the program. I'm going to add a statement underneath my while statement. I'm going to add an if statement. I'm going to say if x is equal to 5, I'm going to print I just found a 5 with three exclamation points because we're very excited to, to find a 5 while we're running our program. What should happen now when I execute this program is it, it will run just like it did last time. x will equal 1, 2, 3, 4, but each time it's going to evaluate this if statement. Well, when x equals 1, that's x is not equal to 5, so it skips the print statement. When x is equal to 2, it's not equal to 5, it skips the print statement. But when x becomes a value of 5, this will evaluate to true, and it should print, I just found a 5. So let's run this program and see what it does. And sure enough, when we execute our program, I just found a 5 is printed right there in the middle. When x equals, let's say x equals 4, that evaluates to true. x is incremented by 1, giving x a value of 5. It prints a value of 5, and you can see that down in the shell window on the left. And then it says, is 5 equal to 5? And it is. It prints, I just found a 5, moves on, x equals 6, it prints the 6, and since 6 is not equal to 5, it only executes that line of code once.
So this little line of code right here, this if statement in a while statement is called a nested loop or, or a nested statement. It is a block of code within a block of code. It's indented four spaces again, and we can nest quite a few things here. Um, I could add another if statement and say, if x is let's see, less than 10, print x is less than 10. If I execute this program now, x is less than 10 only executes once. The reason is, the only time this if statement right here executes is when x is equal to 5. If this evaluates to true, this entire program will, or part of the program will execute. That includes this if statement, and then it checks to see if that's true, and, and prints this line as well. But what happens is, even though x is less than 10 throughout almost this entire program, let's say x equals 1. When x equals 1, it prints 1. It checks to see if x equals 5. It doesn't, so this entire highlighted section of code never executes. That's a nested statement right there. We're going to go ahead and get rid of this part of the nested statement. Um, and let's add another keyword that's going to be important, especially when working with uh, while statements. And that's going to be the keyword break. That is a statement that tells Python to break out of whatever loop it's currently in. So let's have a statement if x equals 7 break. It turns that yellowish color to let me know that Python recognizes it as a keyword. It's, it's not just a regular variable, it's a word that means something. I'm going to run this program now. And it prints 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I just found a 5 because this executed when x equals 5. It got to x equals 7. And when 7 equals 7, this evaluated to true, and it encountered the word break. Break lets Python know that that while statement, no matter what's going on in the while statement, it's time to end it. So this break command right here tells Python that the while statement is done. It's time to move on to the next line of code. And I could even throw a print statement down here to say, you know, I'm done. Run this program again. You can see once it gets to seven, it breaks. When it breaks, this entire while loop stops running, and it goes on to the next line of code. Uh, in the first example, there was no line of code there, so it didn't print anything. It just ended. Um, the second time through, this print statement was encountered, so it printed, I'm done. If I change this to, say, 11, if x equals 11, run the program again, that break st statement is never encountered because the while statement stops executing when x equals 10. X never equals 11, so this check is never encountered. However, when x equals 10, x is not less than 10, the while statement doesn't evaluate to true, and so the entire while statement is skipped and it goes to the next line of code, which now we've added a print statement that says I'm done, so it prints 1 through 10, and I'm done, along with this I just found a 5.